Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight we have a story from one of our viewers and she's from Montana, which is where I used to live. But before we get into that, I am going to be drinking a beer tonight as usual, right? And this is the uh, Farmer's 530 Golden Wheat Ale. And it's pretty tasty. I've had one before, so. <laughs> I look kind of ominous tonight, don't I, with the, the underlighting? It's a little, little spooky even for me. I don't know. But tonight's uh, encounter from uh, Donna from Montana is going to be more of kind of a talk. I'm just going to kind of talk about it. It's a pretty short story, so I thought I'd make a, a great story for our midweek video. So, anyways, let's get the beer in the cup and get the show on the road here. Oh yeah. Ooh, that pour is nice. Sometimes it, the suds come straight up. So, all right, cheers. Golden Wheat Ale. That is really good. It's delicious, actually. Some beers I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's pretty good. But this is, yeah, that's really good. So I used to live in Montana. Lived there for 17 years. Moved there when I was first married back in the late 80s. So it was a long time ago. I love Montana. I'm a Montana boy. Used to work in Yellowstone, which is just down the road from where I used to live in southwest Montana, Bozeman. Yellowstone National Park actually borders Montana, Idaho, and then it's predominantly in Wyoming, northwest corner of Wyoming. But when I was working there, before I got married and moved out to Montana, I worked in Canyon Village as a cook, worked in sporting goods, waited at the, the fountain there in Canyon Village, and did that for three summers. And that's what kind of got me out into Montana, but I just loved it out there. And our viewer is from Northwest Montana. She lives in the uh, Whitefish, Kalispell area. And she hunts, her and her husband like to hunt, north of there in the Whitefish Range. Beautiful mountain range and it's west of Glacier National Park, south of Canada. And really pretty remote country, very forested mountains, nice peaks and some lakes in the backcountry there. And Donna uh, was an, is an elk hunter. Back in 2019, September of 2019, she went on a solo elk hunt in an area kind of near the Stillwater River uh, at the base of the Whitefish Range there. She got there at dawn in the morning and was hunting till about midday going through the forest, looking for sign, looking for tracks, looking for elk, and she was bow hunting all by herself, had a 357 on her hip in a holster, backpack, food, things like that. And she was in a clear cut. And if you know what a clear cut is, or if you don't know what a clear cut is, it's just usually a large open area where the forest service cut some timber out of there for timber products. And she was standing just outside of this clear cut, kind of sloped down, and elk like these kinds of places. They can kind of get open, kind of see what's going on, and then they can quickly go back into the forest. So there's elk trails around here. And her and her husband know this area really well. In fact, they go camping there, they snowshoe there, bring their family there, and they obviously hunt. Kind of like Jeanette and I, we're in the Plumas National Forest in Northern California, and we like to snowshoe, mountain bike, kayak, and we have these very specific areas that we go, and we really know the areas pretty well, where we go anyways. So same with Donna, she really knew this area, and she's standing on this rock outcrop, overlooking this clear cut, and she hears something thud just to the left of her foot, about six inches to the left of her foot. She looks 
down and she sees this large rock just right next to her foot. And she was thinking, did somebody just throw that? Are they messing with me? And she thought about it just for a moment and she said, there's, I haven't seen anybody all day long. There's, there's not possible that somebody just threw a rock at me. I couldn't believe that. And just then to her right, she heard a whistle from kind of down the slope a ways in the clear cut, but she heard this whistle, <laughs> something like that, just to get her attention. And she looked over to her right and down the slope and she saw what she thought was initially a moose just outside of the trees in between two aspen trees. And she, that was her first thought that she's seen a moose because if you ever seen a moose before in the forest, they can have their heads up and you can see their head, but if they ever put their head down, you just see their shoulders and their back and they just this big mass of dark hair and muscle. <laughs> and she took another moment and looked at it and she could see that it was standing clearly on two feet. Large shoulders, two feet, very hairy, small head, and it was eight to nine feet tall, massive. And I talked to Donna on the phone about her experience and I got chills just hearing her because imagining what she had seen and then talking to this person that had seen this. We're going to play some of the uh, some of the audio from that phone call after the story here. And this thing was standing between two asthma trees with one hand on either behind the backs of each tree and these massive hands were around each tree trunk and it was pulling them together like this shaking the tree staring right at Donna, about 60 or so yards away from her. And she immediately thought, she was staring right back at it, she immediately thought, okay, I can't stare at him because it's very confrontational to stare at dominant, let's just say wildlife. Because like a grizzly bear will take it as a threat because you're confronting him and he's the dominant animal. So she wisely kind of looked down but kept her eye on it. She undid her holster, the strap on her holster for her 357 Magnum handgun. That's the handgun I have. She knew immediately she needed to leave. She didn't have time and she told me this. She said, I didn't have time to take the pack up, unzip it, get my camera out, and start taking some nice pictures. This thing wanted her gone. She knew it wanted her gone. And she felt it was a warning. She felt, she didn't feel necessarily safe, but she felt it's dangerous, but it's letting me know. It's giving me an opportunity to leave on my own without escalating this a potential confrontation. So she kept an eye on it, but didn't stare at it. And she said, okay, I'm gonna go down the slope here, follow this elk trail. It's like a deer trail, game trail. And the elk have their routes through the forest, like just like deer, go down to the water, go up to the ridge. And she uses some of these game trails to do her hunting. As she was leaving, she was heading down this game trail, still in the clear cut, and it sloped down to this deep, thick forest that hadn't been cut at all, very thick. And as she's walking by, she heard this deep growl come from just, just down the slope from her, maybe 20, 25 yards. Startled her, she glanced over, didn't see anything, it's really thick in there. And she knew she just needed to keep going. Keep hiking out of here, keep hiking, <laughs> literally. But she felt there was others around as well. She hiked out, she knew her route out, she really knows the area, 
got to her vehicle, went home, told her husband. Her and her husband came back about a week later and they knew of a spring that was down in this area. They went to it and they found some tracks. And springs are obviously where animals would come in and gather and, and they need a water source, right? But they found some tracks there. One of the tracks was in the mud, about 13 inch long footprint, human-like footprint. And she actually did a cast of it, showed me a picture of it. They found some smaller footprints, tracks. She also mentioned that she had a nightmare about this experience. It wasn't this horrific nightmare of being trapped and isolated and, and threatened. It was, she was in this area, hiking, hunting by herself. This is the nightmare. And she gets knocked out by something. She doesn't even know what it is. And she just wakes up and she's back at her car. Like whatever it was, didn't want to hurt her, but just didn't really want her there either. And this is a, a woman who is really not afraid of much. She said she was more afraid of this grizzly bear attack that she had. She had a confrontation with a grizzly bear when she was in Montana hunting at one point. And she was, it was much more frightening, she said. She doesn't get scared easily. And she also said this bear, before it charged her, potentially charged her, some lightning went off and it scared the bear away. And she said, I don't know if there's divine intervention or something, but, but that was scary for her. And uh, she felt this was more of a warning that she got. She also mentioned, this was really interesting, that she went back and I believe she was with her daughter and her husband was maybe there as well. And there's a rock in the middle of this clearing. Pretty good size rock, kind of flat at the top. This clear cut. And she put some fruit and berries and some nuts on it. Came back the next day or not too much later the nuts, berries, and fruit were gone, and in its place was a doll that was made out of grass. Kind of configured out of some blades of long mountain grass. I'm, I'm imagining it was something like, like that. I didn't see it, and she didn't have a picture of it, but you know, this kind of like a human-like shape kind of tied in the middle or something. And that, wow, that is really wild. <laughs> Uh, she also mentioned that they plan on continuing to snowshoe there this winter. They're going to be camping this summer there, and she'll probably be hunting again this fall there. And she's going to let me know. She's going to give us updates if she hears anything else, sees anything else, finds anything else out there. But this happened northwest Montana, south of Canada, west of Glacier. Great country up there. I usually go to Montana about once a year. I'm planning on going this summer, so it should be a good time. But we are going to play uh, a few minutes of the conversation I had with Donna from Montana. That's next. <laughs> That's now. <laughs> play it. I'm pretty, I'm more afraid of a mountain lion than anything else out in the woods, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're pretty stealthy, aren't they? And to, to know yeah. that they could be sitting 20 some feet up in a tree waiting for you know, their prey to come by and just silently mm -hmm. kill them, <laughs> which I they mean, you can wouldn't do. know what hit you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. about the nightmares, I I did for a long time and kind of still do have nightmares about it. And really? it's not, yeah, but my nightmares, are, it's just about being knocked out and drugged back to my truck. That That's basically what it is. So mm. I know that... They don't mean me harm. I mean, even in my dreams, yeah, they knocked me out, but they took me back to my truck, you know. Yeah. And wow. it, it's kind of like, to me, it's kind of saying, all right, so you stay out of our area. This is yeah. our home. Wow. So. And yeah, you've been back there. Yeah. Um, not alone, but yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But I did have yeah. a three fifty seven revolver with me that day that I encountered him. But I wasn't, unless it charged me, I wasn't going to shoot it. Oh, yeah, but of course. Yeah. I would have taken pictures, but to drop my pack and my bow and everything else, it would have taken a while, and that thing might not have liked what I was doing. <laughs> so I mm-hmm. I did what I thought was best and just get out of there. So. Yeah. I'm sure your instincts were telling you. And, and now, when I talked to you before, you described um, when you first saw it. Can you describe that again? And I, I well, believe it you was, said it looked like a moose at first because you, you well, couldn't quite see his, that's, his head. That's what my mind was saying because yeah, yeah, its exactly. arms were out yeah. grabbing the trees and shaking the trees back and forth, and it was on two legs. And I was like, huh. Yeah, that's a moose. But, you know, it whistled. It had whistled just to let me know where it was. You know, Mm -hmm. it wanted Mm -hmm. to draw my attention to it. It wanted me to see it. And so when I looked at it, made eye contact, and realized what I was looking at, I didn't look at its eyes again because I didn't want to, what do you call it, when you um, intimidate by making eye contact. So um, Mm -hmm. as with any wild animal, um, so I, I I observed that it was a male, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no doubt in my mind, just uh, musculature on um, the fact that it was, it was probably eight foot tall, uh, maybe wow. nine, um, wow. just by the size of the aspens, the, um, the stand of trees that it was in and grabbing a hold of and shaking. I mean, mm-hmm. he, it must have had one heck of a grip and a big hand to to actually shake those treats back and forth like that. So, um, yeah, I got a good look at him. Yeah. And so when you got this good look, so you could see him from the ground up, or was there brush? um, There was a little bit of brush covering him. um, From about where? I would would say thigh. I would say above his knees. Yeah. Okay. But you could see two legs, though, is what you're saying. Oh, definitely. Definitely two okay. legs and two arms. <laughs> okay. Because I'm trying to visual picture it in my mind, and my mind initially pictured it as he was half in the brush and you just saw his upper body or something. I wasn't no. quite sure exactly what you'd seen. <laughs> and then was he to the like the left or right side of the tree with his hands in the tree and shaking and then looking at you? Or what? describe exactly the tree and the, where the hands were and where the, the upper body was. Okay, so he was facing me. Yes. And he was grabbing the trees from behind the trees, the tree trunks, and shaking mm-hmm. them back and forth. Um, and so I didn't to actually. The side? Okay. No, 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 he was between the trees, directly between the two oh, trees. Oh, between it was, two trees. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, he was between uh, them and had both arms out, shaking them back and forth, like he was uh, trying to rip them both out of the ground. <laughs> Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. And they were so, yeah, he was, uh, it was a full frontal view of him. <laughs> so, How far away was this? He was about, I would say, between 60 and 70 yards. Okay. Yeah. I think so, not good. quite the length of a football field. No. Um, but he he wasn't close enough that I was too afraid. I knew he could cross that distance pretty fast, but yeah. that's kind of why I I didn't unholster my 357, but I did click the <laughs> click it so I could get it out fast. You know. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was your main encounter there, and then you, you wisely said, I think I, I just, your instincts or whatever told you, I, I better just leave instead of trying to uh, um, figure this thing out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so when I was walking down the elk trail, because I kind of went away from him and downhill, mm-hmm. because he was kind of downhill for me at 75 yards, kind of downhill and on my right. Oh, okay. Downhill, and so okay. I kind of went left and downhill to kind of get farther away from him but going still towards my truck and um like i said i was probably a half mile from my truck wow and 
because when I hunt alone, I don't hunt all day. I hunt till about two or three o'clock in the afternoon, and then uh-huh. I leave. Yeah. Um, but this was probably about one o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Warm day. I was in short my short sleeve camo. Um, got pretty hot hiking around, and so when I was heading down. Um, the edge of the clear cut, there was an elk trail that kind of went right past some deep, dark dank woods where they stopped Mm -hmm. clear cutting. And something was growling at me from there, from inside that dark woods. And I was pretty close to that. So I kind of glanced in there, but I didn't see anything because, like I said, it was dark and really thick. But I knew something was there. And so I was between the two, and I, I was like, well, um, if they're going to get me, they're going to get me. But I'm just going to continue walking to my truck. So yeah, I'm smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like a warning. How did that make you feel when you heard that deep growling? Uh, you know, it was kind of a warning growl. I, I felt like I was, I was in danger, but I don't know. I've been in danger before, <laughs> so yeah. I don't scare easily. I yeah, I don't freak out about much, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been charged by a grizzly, and wow. I can tell you that a flash of lightning came out of the sky between me and that grizz, and the grizz turned tail and ran away, bawling, wow. by the way. So wow. divine intervention, I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> That that scared me, and then I had to process that flash of light. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. Wow! Like all I saw was a grizzly, a very large one coming out of the bushes, and then a bright flash of light. Because I thought I I was dead. Oh, I really impressive. thought that I was going to die, and sure. Then that flash of light came out, and that was ten. My son's ten, so I was pregnant with him when that happened. So that was that was many years ago, ten and a half years ago. So, but okay. you know that that freaked me out more than the Bigfoots. <laughs> okay, so that was part of my conversation with Donna from Montana. That's what I call her now, Donna from Montana. But you know, this is really interesting. The people that I talk to, they're outdoors people, they're campers, they're hikers, they know their stuff. They're not misidentifying this as like a bear walking on two legs. There's been people that say that. It's like, oh, everyone is, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know their animals. They, they don't understand what, what's really going on. And it's a bear that's walking or, or they're lying or something. It's like, no, these are real serious outdoor people. I mean, when you're a, a solo elk hunter, from Montana, you know your stuff. And when you're, especially when you're bow hunting, that's just, you gotta be really stealthy and smart. You gotta know what's going on. And so it's just, it's just really interesting. I just find it interesting. Um, th- these are just my thoughts now, but, but that science has overlooked all of these people, which, which is a lot of you guys out there, overlooked you and said, well, you guys don't know what you're talking about. You don't. You guys don't understand what's really going on. We're scientists. We know everything. It's like no. I'm surprised the scientists haven't. I'm going to start talking to some of these people, and they're not doing that. And so people like me are taking the time talking to people like you or some, you know, like you or or you, and uh, just going. Well, what is what, what is your story? I'm just really really curious. It's always good to be curious about things. And try to get understanding before you make these judgmental decisions about people and, and what they're uh, what they're thinking, so or what they're doing or whatever. But <laughs> pull the judgment out, and like I already got it figured out, so I don't need to uh, um, listen to these people because I already know what's going on. It's like no, you don't. <laughs> so, anyways, those are my thoughts. I kind of get on a roll sometimes, but. I, we are in the middle of a blizzard right now. Uh, It's been, we've had a series of winter storms and no, I'm not camping right now, but it's a coming, I'm coming. And you guys can come or not, but I'm gonna be going camping uh, with the trailer, the uh, canvas tent, backpacking tent, 
and uh, get some other tents too. So it's it's gonna camping is intense. So thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I appreciate you guys as always. Great comments as you guys are great, and um, uh, we will see you on the next one. Keep hiking. <laughs>